The fact that Sir Alex Ferguson's final Old Trafford triumph was with Wigan Warriors rather than Manchester United is a somewhat depressing afterthought to his career. Before Wigan's victory over Hull KR in the Super League Grand Final last weekend, Ferguson was asked to address the team and present jerseys to the players at the team hotel. This was the stadium where he celebrated so many historic victories during his time as United manager. The athletes were glued to his every word. The coach of the Warriors, Matt Peet, claimed, You could hear a pin drop. By then, the 82-year-old was aware that Sir Jim Ratcliffe, United's co-owner, would be terminating his £2.16 million contract as a club ambassador at the end of the current campaign, and he would no longer be able to attend the dressing room which served as the hub of the once-thriving empire he had constructed. It is reported that the in-person meeting between the two men at Old Trafford on Monday of last week concluded in a cordial manner. Although he will miss Saturday's home game against Brentford due to a long-standing personal engagement, Ferguson is still welcomed on match days and is still a friend of the team. It is unclear what will happen to the club's token football board, where he is still theoretically a non-executive director. Does he think that United, under Ineos, is headed in the right direction? Certain sources are unsure. They wonder if Ferguson is content with the new setup, given the mounting dismal mood at United due to Ratcliffe's cost-cutting measures, which have resulted in the loss of 250 positions. In any case, the primary bond that has tied the Scot to United since he left the dugout in May 2013 is severed by the decision to fire him as a paid employee after 38 years. He will no longer wow the sponsors or tour the globe as the club's icon. Representing the group, he helped build into a billion-dollar worldwide brand. He was referred to as the crown jewel by a United source this week. At his theater of dreams, Fergie will now be rather more than just a visitor. She is an ex-manager just like the others. Ferguson is pulling back from a variety of obligations as he approaches his 83rd birthday on New Year's Eve, according to the club. However. It seems like he is leaving United for the second time, and he will have to adjust once more. I don't have any demons about the horrors of missing work. Ferguson recalled his choice to retire in his 2015 book leading. I also had a list of things that I wanted to do, so I could not imagine that I was going to be bored. I imagine some people thought I would find it difficult to relinquish the authority I had enjoyed for so long to others. But I understood the distinction between my role as a United director and ambassador and my role as the manager of the club. Ferguson spoke of his pleasure in rising at 8 in the morning instead of daybreak and of spending breakfast at the Wilmslow House, where he spent most of his 26-year tenure as United manager with his cherished wife, Lady Kathy, who passed away tragically a year ago. Don't put your slippers on is a guideline he made careful to abide by. For Sir Alex, it was always shoes first and then off into the town center where he spent many mornings reading the Racing Post and indulging in his favorite egg and mayo baguette washed down with a coffee at Petit Delice. A French cafe in Wilmslow that is popular with many of the football fraternity and TV celebrities. Ferguson was mostly left alone, but he's always had amazing people skills and was ready to talk to employees and customers and sign autographs. Ferguson always looked like any other person enjoying retirement whether he was conducting errands around town or getting his hair cut at the barbershop on the hill to St. Bartholomew's Church in Wilmslow. Just a regular guy, one of the residents said. You would never guess who he was if you didn't know. Kathy's Sunday meals were usually held at the Alderley Edge Hotel. Ferguson's other favorite spots in the Golden Triangle of Alderley, Wilmslow, and Pressbury were the Italian restaurants Osteria in Matram St. Andrew and Sibo, where he was spotted having dinner with Eric Ten Hag in February of last year. He was so frequent there that he would frequently enter the kitchen and strike up a conversation with the Polish pot washers, showcasing his amazing memory for everyone's name. Ferguson hosts parties at the private dining area of Manchester's Wings Chinese Restaurant, which is currently owned by Gary Neville for his numerous well-known patrons. It's a long way from his childhood, near the Govan shipyards, and his early work at the Remington Rand typewriter plant in Glasgow, where he met Kathy in the early 1960s. The couple then got married and spent £3,000. Their first home was a semi in the city's south. Following his retirement in 2013, 
The couple was able to spend their customary summer vacation in the south of France without being disrupted by United's efforts to sign new players for the upcoming season. After his hip replacement, they also took a boat excursion up the west coast of Scotland. Along with attending the Kentucky Derby, Sir Alex crossed attending the Oscars off his bucket list. Ferguson's involvement in horse racing has grown over the years, and he has notably clashed with former United shareholders J.P. McManus and John Magner over the Irish thoroughbred rock of Gibraltar. These days, he is well known for flying to race events in a helicopter with his close buddy Geb Mason, the CEO of the recruiting company Morrison Group, which also supports the Sir Alex Ferguson Golf Day at the Belfry. They take off from a pad at Matram Hall. When Kathy died last October, after 57 and a half years of marriage, racing provided him with a means of escape. The following month, Ferguson made his public debut by attending Spirit Dancer's Bahrain International Trophy victory. The family home was put up for sale almost right away, and by the time it sold for £3 million five months later, Ferguson had moved to Goostry to be nearer to his three sons, Darren and his grandkids. The photo postcard less populated than Wilmslow, and even farther from Old Trafford, where his bronze statue is situated in front of the North Stand named in his honor, Cheshire Town boasts just two pubs and a bakery. United is not Ferguson's only club, of course. He was invited back to Aberdeen in February of last year to attend the unveiling of another statue at Pittadry, which showed a younger Sir Alex lifting his arms triumphantly after winning the first of his three titles with the Dons in 1980 and shattering the old firm's hegemony over Scottish football. Ferguson returned to Scotland two weeks ago to witness Rangers, his former club, play Lyon at Ibrox while United was facing FC Porto in the Europa League. The defender's late equalizer in Portugal had him saying Maguire 3-3 as he looked at his phone. In addition to the Wigan Warriors players he addressed last weekend, he was asked to address the Sale Sharks prior to their May 2023 Rugby Union Premiership final and the Australia team prior to the Ashes series. He remains a man in high demand. Above all, though, he will always be associated with Manchester United, and the possibility that this week's encounter with Ratcliffe changed that connection irrevocably fills one with dismay and sorrow. The new co-owners of United are saving $2 million annually. But at what cost?